Hello, everybody. Live from Koreatown, it is the Brothers Miller, and you're in the Ozone. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while. We took August off. We had to work on our tans. I know what you're saying. And no, we don't use suntan lotion. But so why are we in the Ozone? Are you ready? We're back. Back by popular demand. It is the Ozone. We're ready to go, folks. There's a lot of stuff that's happened. A whole lot of stuff that's taken place over the month of August. Um, we've had trades. We've had fights. Cats and got knocked out. That sounds like all in your life. It's, <laughs> hey, dude. <laughs> I'm living a dream. All right? <laughs> Keep it low. So, uh, so let's jump right into it. You know, our favorite game is baseball, and we're just going to fire it up for you. We got a lot to cover, so we got to pick up the pace today. The new power rankings came out, T Bone Aroni. And what are they looking like? And you know what? They have the Yankees extraordinarily high. Really? Yeah. I mean, they've, I think they've won 15 of the last 22 or 23 or something like that. But you should look at the quality of opponent. They haven't really tore down the, the doors with uh, battling the quality opponents. Yeah. I mean, you know, they beat who they're supposed to beat, put it like that. And they I, do and they don't because Tampa Bay gives them a real problem. Although Tampa Bay d- gave Tampa Boston Bay a has given everybody a problem lately. Tampa Bay is surprisingly competitive. And yeah. I would say, given their team, he shouldn't win it, but their coach has got to be up for, uh, you know, manager of the year. Yeah, well, their ERA, I do believe, is like third or fourth. Maybe they're in the top five. They're in the top five. They've won eight straight. These guys. This is their starting rotation, though. It's under. They're in the top five, and that's just because it's an unorthodox way of doing things, you know. Yeah, shutting people down. Yeah, which no, which is no longer popular nowadays. What everybody wants to do is slug with everyone, yeah. and as fall approaches, that's not going to be the way you win. I don't think that you're going to beat people's heads in, and that's how you win the game. You're either going to tighten up or not. Um, you know, I mean, they've taken three from Boston. I think they took four from the Yankees or something like that, or maybe four from Boston, three from the Yankees. They they swept the they swept the Red Sox. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought they swept the Yankees too. All the time. <laughs> the Yankees can't beat them in a the game of stickball. No, no. They, they, You know what? I'm watching, and the Yankees are dealing with a lot of injuries right now. Didn't help them at all that Didi Gregorius went down. Didn't help me in my fantasy quest for championship number three. But, mm. uh, you know, they got a lot of those young kids up now who are not tightening up, and it's getting to that point where you have to tighten up. They They've brought never that been kid there. up. No, yeah, they brought that kid up, Luke Voigt, who's swinging the stick. Yeah. Um, but last night he made a key error. That yeah, the game was four two. Yeah, and I home, played first right? base. That's a tough play to yeah, make. But you play. have to focus. You can see what he did. He actually took his eye off uh-huh. the ball. It was a do or die. It was a do or die, and he was trying to make a throw before he made the catch. Right. Which That's was a, you know he was on my team. I got an error for that. Yeah. Well, luckily mine is all uh, offense, so I didn't get an error for it. And then he came up and got a single. <laughs> Which was nice, and it was funny. You should have seen him around first base. It looked like he hit two grand slams. <laughs> he was going to teach them a team. lesson. <laughs> he heard the squad. He had to make up for it. Heard the squad. Because a 4-2 game is much different than a 6-2 game. Very different. Especially at Yankee Stadium. But uh, but if we want to start in the East, they still got uh, Boston as the best team in baseball, as their record would indicate. Uh-huh, as they should, because they are currently. But the Red, um, the the Houston Astros are getting their act back together, so they're going well, to Well, they're a getting the team back together, yeah. and that, that goes a long ways. And in a couple of days, the rosters expand, and they're talking about bringing up Mr. Clutch, uh, Brian McCann. Yeah. They're talking about bringing up a lot of guys. I wanted to get your take. We talked a lot, and we've been talking a lot, about this system of suppression that – is this a part of that bad CBA that, that uh, the Players Association signed? Or what is it that ha- keeps these young guys down with teams that are printing money? Why would Eloy Jimenez not be in the league? Why or would Vladimir, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. not ridiculous. be in the league? Why All of these guys. It's just time control. You get extra a few years extra on their contract. But I would feel like if I was the owner of the team that I would bring you up and you would appreciate it. Oh, you bring me up? Bring you up. Hey, what a guy. And you would appreciate it. I sure would. Because we're going to... Live the life now. You're in the show. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm living the dream. <laughs> I'm in live with the lights. <laughs> it's not just a game, man. <laughs> the show is my life. <laughs> now, and you bring a Jimenez up or a Vladimir Guerrero Jr. up. He gets the love from the city. And you guys. Oh, love. Yeah. You, love. You treat him right. And guess what? He'll stay. He'll stay. And not only At that, a discount rate. Yeah. They're going to make it. They're difference makers. Those guys are down there almost batting 400 in the minor leagues in AAA. Right. I mean, and they're facing major league pitching. Vlad is he's batting four hundred, right? The other yeah, guys just, are almost just, batting four hundred. He just he just literally dropped under. I think the past couple of games he's batting like three eighty seven. I think Yemenez is batting close to three eighty something as well. Right. 
I mean, it's ridiculous because now they've taken advantage of that system so long and so much that now the, they're going, the player's going to have to come back and do something about that. I mean, I do believe, was that George Springer? Or there was uh, someone just a, a couple of years ago that sued, was going to sue one of the teams for holding him down, and they knew that he could come up. Yeah. It was someone I think on the, the only team, that, it was Chris, Chris Bryant. Bryant. Chris yeah, it was Chris Bryant. Yeah. And Chris Bryant, and they, they did the right thing. They brought him up, and he won Rookie of the Year, I do believe. Yeah. Come on, man. And that was in, like, he didn't come up till mid-May or something yeah. like that. Okay, don't be greedy, man. Bring him up. And then they won the championship. Yes. <laughs> With him bad third, I do believe. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, it's ugly. It's ugly because these guys can actually, just like you said, they're difference makers that can actually help these teams. And, and they, these teams act like they want to win and act like they're rebuilding and they're actually just playing games with the money. You're playing games with the G's, man. And you have plenty of it. And you have plenty of it. And don't act like you're into rebuilding and then you're holding down the best players in the minor leagues just so you can get a couple of extra years of control. And the crazy part about it is the general public doesn't know. Yeah. So they can they can perpetrate that fraud and pass off those, the you know, act like it's, oh, yeah, he's not ready yet. Yeah. No, whatever. And we've been around a lot of major league coaches yeah. and players at the they time. Like, better. hey, there's a guy down there right now. He came up. He's looking at me like, hey, you know I'm supposed to be up and here. I'm like, I know. And, he, and I'm looking at him like, you know you're supposed to be up here. <laughs> And then there's nothing they can do about it. They're, the Mets got a kid down there that's hit just hit 33 bombs for the season, and he's not coming up. They talking about they're just going to let him rest, and be ready for spring training. He's not looking to rest. The kid's 23. He's got plenty of fresh legs. However you want it, he can. He, he's I got ready. The fresh to go. legs. Oh, hey, let me uh, in. Come on, let me in, coach. Ready for a double header, triple header. What do you need? A four by four. However you want it. And you know now we're looking at a beautiful race shaping up in the American League West. Because the Oakland A's completely and totally caught fire. But they just got a big blow because their star, Brett Anderson, now went down because Brett Anderson was pitching above his head. and He, just, he was pitching know. above his head. Sean Manet was pitching above his head, and he and went he down. And he just went on the DL. I know. And now you got to depend on Edwin Jackson. Which I don't think that's what you really want <laughs> you to do. You need, you need Edwin Jackson to be a surprise sleeper. Right. He, four Not to five, be the ace. Uh, four or five. You need to be a five, six. Yeah. You go five, six, huh? <laughs> no, lately, he's an ace, but yeah. I don't think that's going to maintain. Well, he got good at last game. No, I think he gave him yeah. four innings and, in like three, four innings. And I also don't think that these guys can stay hot the way that they stayed hot. No. I mean, guys are. Uh, I just think that they're ahead of their curve right now. That's it. You know, they've had their run and it's over because the Astros are actually. That's what I think. Got Altuve back and now they're, they're six and oh since he's been back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, George Springer just came back. You have Correa that's back. And all the pitchers seem like they went through their dead arm period. Right. And the only one that they still need to get back is Lance McCullers. And they're bringing him back for the bullpen. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah. And he's a horse. You're going to bring him in the bullpen? Get he's going to be hard to hit. Forward. Yeah, he's hard to hit. And the same situation like Don't we're be talking so about. hard to hit. Because yeah, I will hit you <laughs> in the end. That way you love, love is Rick James. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they said so the shout out to Rick James. R.I.P. Right on. Rick James says, wow. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, you know, in that same vein, Garrett Cole was a guy that could have been under team control for the right price, and they played him out. They played him out. And now he's looking and trying to pick up a championship. Right. Now he's in Houston, and they could have had him in Pittsburgh in their little run that they're doing right now. In Pittsburgh's their run in that contention. they're doing. Pittsburgh was in contention. And now they – would they had to go try to get Chris Archer, who's not a you know who's not getting yeah. the job done, and all you had to do was not play games, and it's and now it's over. They're this not, they're, this they're is not the game inside it. the game. This is inside baseball. Yeah, and been quite a few teams that have been hot, but it's funny because the St. Louis Cardinals got hot. They came out here to Los Angeles and ran amok on the Los Angeles Dodgers, sure which is really unfortunate. Gave them because the, the Dodgers needed those games. Um, and but yet and still, it didn't necessarily matter because the Cubs have fortified. And I have to give it to Theo Epstein. For a long time, I thought it was, you know, there was a novelty of him being a good-looking young executive and blah, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. Smoking mirrors. To a certain degree. You can't, you know, smoke and mirrors your way through that many championships. But at the same time, now, it, it this guy, you see, he's pushing the buttons that matter. Go get Daniel Murphy. Right. Let's fortify this lineup. You throw Daniel Murphy in the middle of uh, uh, what will be a rehabilitated Chris Bryant and Rizzo and you still have all the young guys. Javi Baez is, has figured the game out now at the major league level. Well, I think Cole Hamels is a big acquisition. Huge acquisition, especially because he looks like Cole Hamels from circa 2009. You have to motivate him to play. Yeah, and he's a winner. I mean, I don't come out there every week to get beat down. To, you know, they just It's already hot in Texas. Yeah, it's too hot in Texas. You and know, he's, and, get, get and he's, beat out you. That's it. He's the last, he was the last of the Mohicans, if you remember, because he was the last man on that, that those Texas teams that were actually – of championship grade, 
that were one pop fly away from one pterodactyl arm away, Nelson right. Cruz, from actually winning a championship. And Nelson Cruz hitting 30 bombs a year anywhere. He's hiding. He's I mean, hiding up in Seattle. Seattle. Come on, Nelson. Nelson, 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 if Nelson's on your squad, I can't. It's hard for me to take you serious because he has to really show you that he wants it more so than he has. The only thing past. I need him to do is catch the damn ball. Well, yeah, he didn't want it, though. This is he, what didn't I'm want it. he didn't he want didn't it. He didn't want it. You know, he was scared, and you can't play scared. Didn't work. You got to want the ball. And if you don't want the ball in baseball, it everybody will knows. find you. It will find you. I don't care if you are in the stands. <laughs> and, you, and it'll come to you and be like, move on. Come on. <laughs> yep. This is how baseball works. But we're looking at those teams. I mean, the playoff picture is pretty clear at this point. We got Boston and the Yankees. <laughs> Cleveland's ran away with it in the Central. Uh, Houston and Oakland are still slugging it out. And then we don't know who that wild card is going to go to. We'll see if Oakland can maintain. If I had to bet right now, I would say that we're looking at Boston, New York, Cleveland, and Houston. And that is a serious rotation. You don't think the Mariners can hold up? No, nah, man. I told you from the word go. Shout out to Pastor Larry. I, did, I told you from the word go. The, the Mariners aren't serious. They're not serious. I don't believe in them. I, although I think that a lot of these How teams many games are they out? can play spoiler. They're seven games back. They're four and a half on the wild card. Yeah, see, they can still do it and because the Yankees are in trouble. I, I mean, don't. I don't necessarily believe that, even though I don't like what they're looking at now. I, well, now, you, now, you DB have, was have, supposed to see the doctor yesterday. It'll be interesting to see what he does. Well, I think that you can't that. go. I don't think pitcher. you can go anywhere without Didi. No, I, I hear what you're saying. You got CC that's suspect. You got Tanaka that's suspect. Who do you have? You have Severino that's really not a big game pitcher. You yeah, have, you have problems. You don't have a catcher because both of the, all of their catchers are except for the the Asian cap who pitched, who, who caught yesterday and actually tricked off a couple plays. Yeah, and but this is the problem though because nobody none of their catchers are fundamentally sound. They all have problems, which seems to be just such the irony of losing and firing Joe Girardi. They got to pay. <laughs> you have to pay because you had a coach who was an extremely fundamentally sound catcher in the major leagues. Yeah, and he got on Gary Sanchez about his defense. And, next and thing that, you know, that he went the wrong out. way. Yeah, that went the wrong way. Yeah. They they sided with the youth and with the talent as opposed to with the coach and the discipline. So if that's the case, then why don't you move Gary Sanchez to first base? And since Greg Bird is Isn't sticking working drug, out, uh-huh, yeah. and bring up one of those kids and let them catch. I don't know. The way that it goes now, I want to get Miguel Handrujar behind the blade. <laughs> this he guy. Oh, my goodness. This dude swings the stick. Him and Glaber. Him and Glaber. Torres. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's what the, the picture is looking like in the American League. In the National League, you got a nice battle brewing over there. Because now the Washington Nationals have succeeded that they've seeded that they're not going anywhere. And that's why they're getting rid of people. And it looks like Gio Gonzalez is the next to go. Now, what I'm wondering why? is... Is that's what I'm wondering? Is Geo the kind of guy that has lost his confidence and his stuff because he's not motivated? Because he doesn't believe in what the coach was selling, what Dave Martinez and them were selling over there? Or do you think he's just not focused? Because Geo, he just I just Geo is the homie, I know and, I, the and, homie. I, and I can't understand because he has good stuff, but he, it's like he doesn't trust his stuff. He's not confident in his stuff. But it's it seems that is the time every year or every season that. Geo loses focus and then he doesn't yeah. have it. And this year it's been the whole year pretty much. Yeah. And so now I wouldn't trust him. I wouldn't give up any big time prospects to get Geo. I right. mean, what, what is he bringing to the table? You don't know what you're getting. Well, I think at that point you're just going for experience. And the team right above them are the Philadelphia Phillies, and they're banging it out with the Atlanta Braves. It is, they are neck and neck. Uh, they're three and a half back, they're two and a half back on the wild card. And they just picked up Joey Bats, who, by the way, is making everybody pay for not yeah, giving them that deal. They got to pay. They got to pay. I like that from Joey Bats. He's yeah. showing me art. Yeah, but the Braves are real, though. The and, Braves are real. And the Braves are going to be a problem for any of the teams that they match up with, with the Dodgers, you know, with the um, if it's the Rockies, or I don't believe in Arizona. Uh, what happened? You told me Arizona was real. No, I told you the Rockies are real. No, you told me Arizona. We can run back remember. the tape. We, we the, last pod, the, tape. the last podcast, we, we which got, was about two years ago, you told last me that the Arizona. Years ago, <laughs> this year to year, you go. <laughs> no, I'm talking about, no, honestly. I'm talking about you. I want to talk about Palace. I'm talking about at the, at the beginning of August, you said you thought Arizona was real. I told you they weren't real. Now, Colorado is potentially real. Yeah, and you didn't think that they were real. I told you they're real. And, they, they tricked the game off last night, though. They sure did. And they those kind of games hurt. They do. DJ LeMahieu clutches up and it's a grand salami in the eighth, and then you can't hold the game. That's shame on them. They should have brought in their closer door in the eighth. Yeah, Adam mean, Adovino wasn't ready. Yeah. Well, Adam was a, he was a wild boy. You <laughs> you wild. You wild. You a wild boy. Yeah, but honestly, I think the Dodgers are going to end up pulling it off again. I know, and even if they do, they they focused on offense, and the, if the other teams who have pitching, they're going to give you a problem. You have Manny Machado and Justin Turner, and everybody else is. Hitting closer to 200 than they are to 250. Yeah. 
Which and, is a serious problem. So who you have Clayton Kershaw in your rotation. And Alex Wood. Alex Wood. Hunjin. Hunjin is suspect. I need a right-handed stud. Yeah. And you got uh, you have you got Walker Bueller. Oh, you got Bueller. Bueller. <laughs> yeah, you do have Bueller. And Stripling, but they got strips and chips in in the bullpen. Yeah. Mm, chips and salsa out there. Yeah, a little guac. Mm-mm. And so, I don't know. I still think the Dodgers, you know what the Dodgers haven't done this year that they've done every year for the last maybe four years? Peel off that long winning streak. <laughs> Peel off that crazy winning it's streak. It's too late for it now. I mean, it's 30 games left, 29 games left. I know. It would be nice to go 20 and 9. I think that they're going to have to play against some of these teams that they're battling, though, and that's going to be different because the maybe Rock, the but Rockies they, aren't afraid of them, and Arizona gives them a problem in Arizona. Yeah, but I think there's there's usually a good four or five game stretch against San Diego where you can get your confidence. I up. think they just got finished with San Diego. They, they did, did, but I don't think that's it. You think that's it? That's it. I, I think they, they got to go they down. Have to San one more Diego. series, but you know what? They're going to have to play against the Rockies. They're going to play against the uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks, and the, both of those teams give them a problem. Mm-hmm. Clayton, not with Clayton Kershaw, but with the other pitchers. Because I don't believe that Rich Hill is going to give these teams a problem like that, especially if the Rockies are playing in Colorado. Main thing that I can see is a problem for Philadelphia is that Philadelphia, unlike most of the teams that you look at, are is actually very, very home friendly. Philadelphia is forty one and twenty three at home versus twenty nine and thirty eight on the road. Problem. That's a problem. And uh, the only other team that's crazy like that in reverse, which is really impressive. Are the Houston Astros, yeah. who are thirty four and twenty nine at home, but forty seven and twenty one on the road? So they want to get to your house. You want to win a road game? Bet on the Astros. Yeah. <laughs> and then Boston's record is just insane. It's and insane. So, and the Astros it. really are the only team that can beat them, and they're going to beat them with that front line pitching. Yeah, I mean that's this is what this is why they play it. Right. Me myself, I still got, like the Cubs to come out of the out of the National Cubbies, League. Boy. I like the Cubs coming out of the National League, uh, even though I'm scared a little bit of Atlanta. And the Doyers, uh, you know, after watching Ken Lee come back, and Ken Lee hasn't been the same since he yeah that flat that flat uh, cutter yeah, and he hasn't been the same since the heart issue. He's been coming back with the flat cutter, and I don't like you said. I don't think it has anything to do with his heart. This is just the, that flat cut piece. Yeah, the flat cut piece, which is a BP fastball, which goes the wrong ways. You can look at him and see his face when he throws. Like, yeah, <laughs> a flat cutter. <laughs> this is bomb. <laughs> So they're talking about Friday's a big day. Josh Donaldson could go. Gio could go. Andrew McCutcheon could go. There's a, the, there's a So there's a lot of suspect players right now that can go. There's a lot of suspect players who, though, could then in turn revitalize their interest in the game, just like you're talking about with Cole Hamels. Yeah, but I don't think that it works like that for maybe. I mean, but for and, the everyday players? Yeah, for like Andrew McCutcheon to go to the American League. I just don't feel like his skill set now is that to the point where he can go and jump in the American League and start just ripping the ball apart, right, ripping, again, you know, ripping the cover I, I'm, off. I'm, I've watched him play recently, and it didn't look like he was just, you know. I'm just amazed at what happened yeah. to him. It seemed like there's something that you'll find out years down the road, something happened to him personally that you, you know. Right, because the decline was just overnight. I mean, it was, wow. And congratulations to Mike Shield because uh, it's been named the Cardinals field manager. They took that interim tag off. And it's go time. Three years. Yeah, boy. All right. Enough baseball. I love it, but there's never enough baseball. I was going to say, you're off the show. Um, <laughs> it's over. It's called the T-Zone now. And T's for testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> now, being August, moving into Labor Day, it's time for professional football. And it is also time for the NCAA to pop off with some college football, which means that some wonderful video games have come out. It also means that it's time for Next Victim to give us his award-winning and monetary-winning <laughs> predictions and picks for this season of college football. Next Victim, live in the Ozone, how you feeling? What is good, Ozone? Welcome back like college football, and we're going to be <laughs> hot like them Lake Elsinore fires. Ooh, Ooh. man, that's hot. <laughs> no, that's hot. Don't get, it, don't get it hot like that. Yeah, Ooh. buddy, so, so, so tell me something. Last year, you went on an extraordinary run of picking some upsets in college football, some underdogs. It was like you had a man on the field. I, I was going to call you Ace Rothstein. You seem to always have the inside <laughs> man to know what was going down. This year, college football seems to be marred kicking off with scandal, just like professional football. There's a whole thing going on with Ohio State. Urban Meyer seems like he doesn't know what's going down. Uh, I saw Nick Saban talking slick on TV yesterday. I'm not fully versed on the world of college football, but I know that you are. So l- lace me up. What you want to know? College football is about to take off. Um, Who do you so, like? Top 25. 
We saw once again we saw Alabama make moves. Nick Saban didn't want to answer whether or not he was gonna which quarterback he was gonna start or which quarterback he was gonna play for the majority of the time. Who do you like going in? Uh, who, uh, I, obviously, with college football, they seem to set teams up to just get massacred on opening weekend. Well, it's all about the schedule too, because with, yeah, with college the scheduling, yeah, the scheduling is crucial. You look at a team like Michigan. Michigan's got a way harder schedule than uh, Alabama. And Alabama, but they need to be because it's, it's big, you know, big plans. Jim Harbaugh is a big man, so he coming back to Michigan, you know, after three seasons, you know, he he needs to step up. It's either win or go home right now for for them. So the best way to do that is to stack your schedule, so you can be recognized, and that the kids get out there and play. It's like, but uh, I'm rolling with like my top four at, at the end of the season. I'm going with Georgia. I believe in them kids. Uh, I got to stay with, with Dabo and Clemson. Clemson you Titans. love Clemson. <laughs> love a <laughs> team. Dabo Sweeney is, is I'm going to say he's a new Nick Saban right now. He's a new Jimbo Fisher just because he has the kids playing, and it's all about the kids with him. Um, my other squad is Wisconsin, and I'm going with Michigan State also. I got to go with the green and white. All the fans out there love to see me with my Michigan State sweatshirt <laughs> on. So <laughs> I got to roll with the green and white. <laughs> Um, so I eliminated uh, um, Alabama, and basically, I don't like I don't like Nick Saban, and I don't like what he's doing with the quarterback situation. Um, Urban Meyer, Ohio State, they're ranked at I believe number five, but I don't like you know what he what he has done and what's going on with Ohio State. Uh, I, I'm thinking like nowadays the game of college football. It's been going this way where the, the coaching is, is bigger than the actual kids playing. Really? So I had to eliminate those two schools. And, well, at least you know, we know the coaches are actually getting paid. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's a whole other episode. <laughs> on, yeah, because uh, Saban just yeah. got, what, another 1.1 1. 1 for incentives? He's got yeah. major bread. Now, let me ask you this, not to jump off of college football, but why is it that like a guy like Saban – can dominate in college football but can't win in NFL? Because the kids are playing. You know, he can go out there and recruit the kids. You know, kids know just under his name alone that, you know, they can be a top, say, three three round in the draft. So, you know, coming with these kids that's coming from basically nothing and going to this school, you know, under Nick Saban, the name, it's like you know that you're going to get, you know, a, a, a meal ticket. And that's really what, you know, we want everyone to get paid. But, you know, to, to do something that you enjoy doing, which is football, minus the CTEs, you know, you, you're going to get that, that contract to get paid. Whether if it's a, a football contract, whether if it's a shoe contract, you're going to get some type what of What if it's a shoe program? <laughs> it's the shoe program right now. <laughs> Uh, sorry, program. Lonzo came out. <laughs> <laughs> Put you on lockdown. 23 yeah. hour lockdown. But, it, you know, it's, it's some big games this weekend, man. It's a so big you, you like to talk to me about the big games. So we got, uh, you know, San Jose State is playing. So we got to roll with San Jose because that's the alumni school. Not a they big start, game, though. <laughs> they, start, they start Thursday. It's a big game because it is, you know, college football, food, whatever. <laughs> but, Homer. <laughs> I, I, I hear a I hear a homer over there. I'm hearing a homer for the home team, Kevin. We got we got Washington playing Auburn in um, Auburn, so that's that's one of the big games on Saturday. Um, UNLV is at USC. You know, SC is going to win that one. We got Cincy at UCLA. We got UCLA winning that one. We got number fourteen Michigan playing at. I think number Cincy 12, is going to upset Dame. UCLA. You know what? I'm on the border with that, but I'll bet you five ten if you uh if you want. We make it a nickel. All right, we get a nickel piece. There it yeah, is. All right. all right, so uh Sunday we got another big game. We got University of Miami Miami, the U. They're playing against uh them L S U Tigers in L S U. I like L S U but Wow, they're Miami kicking off with a nice schedule. Yeah. It goes down in college football. They don't care if you you know who you are. They they and, want and to get it all. And they also don't care if it's Sunday. <laughs> right? <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> what? That they doesn't don't make care. any sense. Wow. But the NFL's so, not on yet. Once the NFL starts, they don't hit it on Sunday. This wow. is the thing that I love about college football, man. We got games on Thursday. We got games on Friday. 
We got games on Saturday. We got games on Sunday. And we got a game on Monday with number 20, Virginia Tech versus Florida State. So it's going down. It's a great way to break off, to break into the NFL season as well. You know what I mean? So let the horns play. It's about to go down. College football is is, is my lifestyle, and I'm ready to go. Put your money on so, me. So who's go- Who's going to be the – you got as number one, who is it? Who you're picking? Let's hear it. Right now or at the end of the season? Well, he gave us his top, he gave us his top four at the end of the season. Yeah, at the end of the season. I want number one. I want to know who's going to bring on Ooh. that national championship. Wow. that's Dabo Sweeney, Clemson, Clemson Tigers. Okay. Wow. Well, what Clemson I want to Tigers. know is, is who's the underdog bet this weekend? The underdog bet. Oh. Who's your Who's your sleeper underdog bet? Where I can go pick up a couple of coins, if LSU, you know what I'm saying. LSU over Miami. That's my underdog bet. Wow. Now that's good. Because LSU is number 25 and Miami is number 8. Um, Miami went into the season last year rolling. Rolling. Had a great uh, a great bowl game. Like they was rolling. But uh, is there something about that, that, that gold and purple with LSU? Something about them, so... I like ti- I like them tigers. Tigers up. Okay. Wow. Tiger transport. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hey, tigres. Right. I like tiger. Right. Tigres. <laughs> <laughs> but I have one more question for you before you go, victim. How do you feel yeah, about well. the angels? See, that's that boo right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> what's the problem yeah what's the problem you guys got the, I, honestly you guys got two of the best five players in all of baseball over there and yet one of them only plays a third of the time and not because he's injured Shohei Otani I have to say Shohei Otani has been completely mismanaged by the Anaheim Angels of Los Angeles yes. of Anaheim 15, 15 home runs in 200 and something at bats this kid is the best player in the world, yes. in my opinion. He's the best baseball player in the world all around. Him and Mookie Betts, <laughs> even yeah. though Mookie Betts can't deal. In that and, order. And, and, and the reason I give it to the reason I give it to Shohei is because Shohei can deal as well. Right. And I don't think he would have gotten hurt if they would have just kept him on his regular schedule. Right. Keep but, him on a regular program. He came from over. He was pitching five days a week. He was come on, back. man. <laughs> Now you got him pitching nine days, ten yeah. days, all kind of. The rest is inconsistent. Yeah. and suddenly is he can't the, play in the outfield. Yeah, he can't play after yeah. he played the day before. I mean, this is like very delicate for a young man that's obviously in great shape and ready to go. I mean, he came in there yesterday banging the baseball. He sure did, and they ripped him off on a couple of bats. They ripped him off on his last at bat. As a matter of fact, that was a ball. After after pitching the practice game, after pitching the practice game, come on, man. Show it's showtime, and you guys are messing around in third place or fourth place because you don't want to manage the team properly. Now you tell yeah. me right now on the way out. I gotta have it. Does does Mike Sosha need to go, or are you still riding on the social train from him blocking uh, the plate in 1984? <laughs> he need to go right now. Don't even wait to the end of the season. He need to go right now. He needs to go. I agree. Wow. So, what, what you waiting for to to keep hindering p- players? Get up out of there now. Bring somebody in there that's, that's ready to take over and know what they're going to have going into next season. Get his ass up. Out. I'm I'm, I'm starting a campaign. Get out. <laughs> get out, so You and Jordan Peele. The get out movement. You feel like the angel's in the sunken place. <laughs> they are. They are knee deep. <laughs> they, they have way too much talent to end up in third place. So far, Well, how many games are they below 500? Oh, man, they're two games below 500. That makes no sense at all. Makes no sense. You have the talent. Okay, get rid of uh, – I'm not going to say get rid of nobody, but they need a better bullpen because they're losing so many games from the sixth to the ninth inning uh, and well, puts too much pressure on the, on the sticks with Pujols and Trout and everybody else. Pujols still so swinging. how can you bring Eric Young back into the league and he's balling out? He's balling out. He's, he's putting up decent numbers. But it's the bullpen. The bullpen uh, well, is terrible. It's more than the bullpen. And not only that, I would. this is blasphemy, but I would trade Mike Trout and build my whole organization back up because they don't have anybody really in, in the minor leagues. They got one kid down there that's oh, no. supposed to be all world. But you can that's trade like, trade Mike Trout. I don't even think you have to trade Mike Trout. They, they don't have, have to trade Mike Trout. I, I mean, that's I hear like what you're saying. saying. You're you, they don't, they don't have any talent in their, in their minor leagues. That's not saying because the, because the Boston Red Sox are winning and they have kids in the minor leagues. The Angels but don't have anybody in the minor on. leagues, and they so don't have any, trade. and they just have that 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 starting twenty four that they got up there now. 
you can be okay with trading your second best player on the scene. You can't be okay with that. Yeah, I can if it's going to better the organization. But it's not though. How with that? If if, if they were not assigned a ten year deal for for Fat Pujols, we would be all right. But you can't yeah. trade him. You got to deal with him. So you cannot trade my trial. How many and more years does Albert have on that deal? I think of like three, four, something the, crazy. Twenty twenty eight Olympics. That's when this deal <laughs> <game> is over. <laughs> 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 he got it them out. He got a thirty year deal. And the Cardinals are, the Cardinals is sitting pretty. Laughing. Right. Wow. Come on, man. Yeah, but you but I'm saying that if you traded Trout, then you would be able to get a King's ransom and you can rebuild your organization like the Yankees were in a bad situation a few years ago. And then what they had done was just make a couple of big moves and replenish your minor league system and then you can build from there because you have Otani that you could actually build around. And you have a then it's you a would different organization though, T. It's but a it's baseball. Organization but it's baseball. Cats wanna, but cats want to go to to New York, and they want to go out there. They know they're going to win. Cats is not going to want to come to a mediocre team like the Angels that's in transition. So if you keep a trout there, you keep a Showtime there, you have a better chance of attracting you know some talent that's going to come. I don't think I the don't Angels think so. ever have a hard time getting people to come play in beautiful city of Anaheim, California. I think they I will. Think, I, think that, I think that the only reason that will give you a, a problem, outfielders obviously love coming to play in Los <laughs> Angeles. I think, that if, uh, I think that if you continue to show that you give false statements to people like Shohei, you're going to have a problem. Because I can't imagine Shohei sh- signed there based on the idea that he was going to play every blue moon. I yeah. just I don't I don't think that's what they that's what they sold them. I think they sold them a bill of goods. But next victim, thank you for your insight for the NCAA football picture, but also for your candidness and honesty about the Los Angeles Anaheim <laughs> Angels of <laughs> New York of, <laughs> of San Diego's <laughs> province of Fullerton and Fontana on the south side of Cypress and Garden Grove. <laughs> don't forget Beaumont. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the desert. All right, Tipper. Talk to you soon. Late. All right, later. Ah, nice piece by Victim Knight. Nice. I like where he was going with his. Oh, yeah. It's a very interesting point, though, because he, he leads us into professional football, which is about to kick off, which everybody seems kind of lukewarm on. You know, it's uh, it, it's it, they, they've really, really got everyone by the short and curlies. Yeah, but th- let's not go with that false narrative that it's the the kneeling and everything else that's hurting the game or whatever because that's not the problem. The problem is that they just have to make the game not as corporate. I feel like they've they've made. What the, does that mean when you say that? Not as corporate as far as with the president spewing out false narratives and with the kneeling, and then also with the rule changes. They have so many things that are just designed for a handful of guys to succeed. Like Tom Brady or the like quarterbacks, yeah, just quarterbacks in general. Offense, yeah. Ultimately, I feel like football has is is in the midst of crafting a way, just like how other sports have been, uh, in crafting a way to make the game offensive, yes, and offensive based. You, it is impossible. I'm with Richard Sherman on this one. It's impossible to tackle a guy without putting your helmet towards his chest. You don't have to go helmet down, so you go helmet crown down and helmet to helmet. But if a guy is going in the other direction and you try to you try to tackle him chest to chest, you're going to get juked. Or with just your arms because now we're looking at a bunch of dislocated shoulders. And 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 arm tackles that don't work yeah. because the guys are too strong and too fast and so have too many moves. Don't hit him in the knees. Don't hit him above the, the – there's a small window that you can actually make a tackle. And don't touch him when he's when you're running in reverse and he's running forward. Right. And now – Now, did you see that play the other night with the quarterback when uh, uh, the offensive lineman – Got shed. They shed the blocker and hit the quarterback. Just completely blindsided the quarterback. It was a clean hit, but they called a penalty on it. This is what they do now. So you can't even hit the quarterback at all, even if you have a, a clear path to him. And he has the ball. And he has the ball. He had the ball. He got sacked. He got blindsided. Well, let's see. And herein lies the problem. It's a serious problem. And just like I didn't like Major League Baseball shrinking the strike zone to get more or offense, four fingers up, and and yeah, yeah. But see, but but the offense. I'm I'm talking about overt offensive moves, yeah. and which changing is, of the mounds, and yeah, all that kind of stuff. changing the mounds, changing the strike zone, um, literally making the culture acceptable to hit. You know, low average, high home runs. Yeah, the steroid era. 
Basketball has the same thing going on because they've basically outlawed the big man in his traditional form. Right, and you defense. Can't, you can't punish people down low as a, as a bigger person. You the, the defense is non-existent. Don't even look the wrong way at Steph Curry. You're getting, you might get ejected. Out of uh, the arena. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and now football has followed suit. And they're like, you know what? People do like offense. Nobody really likes a 7-3 to three game. People like 42-29 to 29 games. And we're going to give them just that. And I think that that's also a root cause of more injuries as well because if you're talking about guys streaking down the field like that if for 48 minutes, it's a problem. I mean, because It's a lot. It yeah, takes a lot, a lot of, of trauma on, on the body. Yeah. There's, no, there's, there's less time to rest within the game. Yeah. And here to talk about the NFL preview, we have a longtime contributor to the Ozone. He's happy to hear we're back too. Trucker Hello. Dave. Uh-uh. Trucker <laughs> Dave. We're back. The Ozone is back. It's fall. It's almost time for Major League Baseball playoffs, which means that football is here in college and in the NFL. We had to get you on the line to hear what's going down. How you feeling? Feeling pretty good. It's about to go down. Can't wait for the season. It's going down. (laughs) It's going down. I mean, we know that you're a very, very big New England Patriots fan. And uh, and 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 I heard that they got under touchdown Tommy Skin the other day. Made him hang up talking about his his trainer and his travel plans and this that and the other. What's your take? Let's start right there with the contenders, uh, with the runners up in last year's Super Bowl. How do you feel about your your faves? I don't know. They look pretty unstable at the receiver position. Uh, you know, they're thinking about uh, maybe bringing in Dez, and you know, Eric Decker retired, and uh, they cut Kenny Britt. And you lose Julian Edelman for four games, so it's going to be really, really interesting, you know. So I think what they're going to do is probably uh, use James White out of the backfield, maybe put him in the receiver position, and even uh, just focus more on the running game with uh, the rookie Shoney Michelle. Interesting. Do you feel like they're contenders once again, or do you feel like somebody's actually going to keep them from the Super Bowl? Because they're like LeBron James when it comes to the Super Bowl. They can get there. Count on them. I mean, they win a whole lot of them, but I'm saying you can count on the New England Patriots to get there just through the sheer discipline of their program, so it seems. Yeah, the system is The system is airtight. Me, myself, I like to keep mine west-west. I told you I'm going through a divorce right now with the Raiders, even though we brought back <laughs> John Gruden. You know, uh, we, tr- we tried to go to counseling. We were working on some things, but... You know, I just I just can't get the Raiders to stop lying to me. They just won't stop lying to me. Mm-hmm. They tell me they're coming home, but then every time I look on the internet, they tell me they're moving out to Vegas. So I, I, I had relationship problems with them. Things and are getting weird. Things are getting weird, and uh, and we need to talk. So now I think I'm moving into Ram time, and I really like what the Rams are doing, especially if they ever actually stop dragging their feet and and and, and make it official with that man Aaron Donald. Well, you know what? The problem with John Gruden, he's making a big mistake right off the bat with not giving Khalil Mack his money to consensus. I don't I understand why. Why you would you pay not pay guy. Khalil Mack? Why would you not so, pay make him? any sense? So the rumor is that uh, the Packers, who have room, may you know trade for him and offer them like a first round because you know they need an outside linebacker. Who doesn't need Khalil Mack? Exactly. But why wouldn't you right. pay Khalil Mack when you bring in? Uh, uh, Jordy Nelson, and who's, you know, and you don't, I mean, Khalil Mack, think about what you're doing here, man. It just doesn't make any sense. No I, I just sense. don't understand. Oh, I don't understand. I don't understand in all of these sports. We were just talking about it a little bit ago in Major League Baseball. They suppress these kids so that they can get a couple years extra on their contracts at a discount rate when the kids could actually help them win now. They can. I mean, look at Odell Beckham. I mean, I mean finally, they want to pay somebody in the NFL, I mean, uh, like the receiver, and you make Odell Beckham the highest-paid receiver when that should be Antonio Brown. I just I don't understand the, the pay structure of the NFL. It just doesn't seem like, you know, they're going about it the right way. Man. I'm, really, I'm really questioning that. Or give that money to Julio Jones, who was threatening to hold out. Um, you know, these guys are proving themselves. I like Odell Beckham, too. But at the same time, man, football needs to start paying these guys with the guaranteed contract like they're just finally starting to do like the other sports do, like baseball and basketball. Well, let's see what Odell Beckham uh, had to say about whether or not he's matured. I don't know if he's matured or not. He said his goals were a lot bigger. Um, Just honestly, it just was something that, um, you know, I'm not, so say, proud of anything that's, you know, ever happened. But, uh, 
I'm able to, you know, take everything that's happened for me and, and, and make it make myself into a man and learn from those mistakes and, and be able to look myself in the mirror and, and, and have to deal with those things. So this has been the I, I hate it wasn't the best thing that happened to me with the ankle, but what I got to learn and take and grow from uh, was everything that I needed in my life. And um, now I'm able to, you know, take that and, and keep going forward and um, just be the best me that I could be. Now, me personally, I don't think that, uh, you know what, I don't think it's the right move. I don't think signing Odell Beckham to the crazy, crazy deal, I'm very happy for him. I'm happy he got paid. Um, but I don't think that I can give him 95 and 65 guaranteed. For one, if I was somebody who negotiated deals as I play on television – I would look into the short-term deals that are actually robust short-term deals with everybody in football. Especially since they're not guaranteed. They're, well, yeah, and I'm saying even, but you could, you could potentially give these guys deals that they're satisfied with, and they could be robust deals that don't sacrifice the team when it comes to potential injuries. And, I, I mean, Odell needs to get paid. I agree. Does he need to get paid more than Antonio Brown? Hell no. Everybody Hell knows he no. doesn't need to get paid more than Antonio Brown. If you don't, you have a problem. Have you lost your mind? Know, Antonio Brown is, is the true. model of consistency. The guy he came is, back man. after breaking his ankle, more or less, breaking his leg, and still came back and balled. I think what people don't look at, too, is the fact that I know Beckham does, but uh, like when they compare him to Julio Jones, is that he plays outside in cold weather, and he catches the ball with his hands, and his route running is just like second Superb. to none. Superb. It's second to none. You know, and he doesn't bring you that drama that you get with uh, Odell Beckham. No, no, he does his work and and he delivers. His skills are yeah, extraordinary. Man. Yeah, but it's exciting to have the season back. You know, and you know what do you guys think about going into baseball season? Who do you who do you like uh, like in the postseason? You know, it's it's hard to it's hard to call, but honestly, the Red Sox look pretty pretty legit, and they have looked pretty legit, and I think that the, the Red Sox and the Houston Astros are going to end up clashing. And it, I think we're going to get a replay of the Indians and the Yankees from last year. And unfortunately, I think uh, the Yankees don't have enough this go around unless they do something about their pitching. And I think that the Indians will pull that off and they'll try to play spoiler for whoever it is that actually uh, that actually gets – well, actually, no, it's, it's going to be the Red Sox and maybe even the Red Sox and Yankees in the first round because the Red Sox are going to end up with that playing against the wild card. And uh, the the Indians will be packing home. But me personally, this year, I've been saying it all year, I really like the Cubs. I like the Cubs out of the National League. I like Joe Madden. I like I like the Theo Epstein. I like their team. And I like their ability to potentially pull it all off. With, uh, you know, with, with pertaining to the, the NFL, I like what the Rams are doing. But it's always so hard to call the NFL before the it NFL is, starts man. because of the injury factor. I know. I yep. actually really like Kansas City. But I I can't trust Andy Reid. Yeah, that, that well, kid Mahomes that, should light it up though. He is lighting it up, man. He can throw a deep ball, and you know they they were doing right by him by drafting him when they did and letting letting Alex Smith go. So you know, kudos to them. I want to see what they do at cornerback. You know, losing Marcus Peters, right? And uh, yeah, you know, That's it's going to be real interesting to see what happens. But I really think the good fit for Dez will probably be in Jacksonville. I mean, because they lost Allen Hearns. They, lost, they just uh, lost Marquise Lee. They lost Marquise Lee. They lost Mercedes Lewis. That's a perfect place for Des Bryant to go. People want him to go to New England, but I think it's – I don't think New England is his place, attitude-wise. I don't think that fits properly. And, yeah. Uh, I, and Jacksonville's going to bring the defense, and and he could mess around and sneak him some serious offense out of that situation potentially. Yeah, so the NFL coming back is, is huge, but people are really, really waiting for the NBA, man. I never they, feel like a season that NBA is overshadowing everybody else. It's like it never stopped. It's like it never stopped. They really took a page from the NFL and ran with it. It's impressive. I know. Really, really it's impressive. Very impressive. Really what impressive. What do you think, T? About which point? Uh, about the, uh, the Major League Baseball. Oh, I, you know what? In the National League, I like the Rockies. Actually, I feel like the Rockies have a lot of potential, and so do the Atlanta Braves. But in the in the net, uh, the American League, I'm definitely going with the Houston Astros because they got pitching. Yeah, you liked them last year, I remember? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Big of the Houston Astros. Yeah. Well, they've gotten even better this year. 
wow, man, it's going to be going down in just a little bit of time. Very short sure period. And I think where it's going down, honestly, I think I, I'm expecting an outrageous year from Drew Brees. I think that the Saints are going to yeah. make noise, and I actually think that they had the potential to really to really make some things pop if they could have got there last year. I agree with you. They were just one play away, They are one play away. You know, Drew Brees is uh, that guy. You know what? I like the way New Orleans drafts. Uh, they've been having some really, really good drafts the last uh, couple of years, and I'm looking for them to have a really good season. But the thing about the NFC is you just don't know. I, I like I like what Atlanta did by getting that receiver, take some pressure off of Julio Jones. And um, it's interesting to see what's going to happen with the Eagles. And, you know, people are talking about Dallas and, and Dak and uh, Zeke going to be able to carry him without uh, Dez and everything. So, NFL, and then you got, you know, look up at San Francisco. What's going to happen with Jimmy Garoppolo? Yeah, you know, Jimmy they gave G. him all the money. So, you know, what's going to happen with Russell Wilson? Will he be able to carry the team? And Russell they Wilson has no help. Back. Yeah, they have no yeah. help. Now, let me yeah. ask you this. What are you expecting out of Deshaun Watson? Uh, I would not be surprised if Deshaun Watson could go all the way, man. I mean, that guy, I believe in <laughs> he, he, he lit it up last year before mm-hmm. he got hurt. Man. That guy has been lighting it up, man. That guy's the truth, man. He can read defenses. What do you guys like out of the rookie quarterback? Ooh, excuse me. I actually like the SC product. I like what he's doing in the preseason. I like Darnold up there, uh, Sam Darnold up there in in with the Jets, hoping he gets the the starting nod and he can bring back the Jets, 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 Jets with a little bit of that Southern California excitement. Now, one thing that I'm excited to see is if he can deal with the cold. Oh, he should be all right there. That's mental, you know. They said he's like the first person in the indoors and the last person to leave. And, you know, he's picking up the offense. It's pretty good. What do you guys think about Andrew Luck coming back? <laughs> Man, I don't, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if he's back. I mean, right. he missed the second day of, of, of practice, and they're saying if it was a game-time situation, then he wouldn't have missed it. But it, it's, you know what? Andrew, you have to see him play, actually. I need to, to see it. To recognize us, to see if he's going to actually play. And then let's just stop talking about Andrew Luck as though he was Tom Brady when right. he was playing. It, this is Andrew yeah. Luck was good, but it, I, you know, I'm not. It's not like it's a given that he's going to the Super Bowl just because he's back, especially after not playing for two, three years. Well, you know, they've been having problems too with the offensive line, uh, shaky coach, uh, owner on drugs. They got you know a little bit of. There's a, a lot of a lot of scandal, a lot of problems and, going on and, uh, up there in Indianapolis. So. Interesting to see, but it's going to be a lot to talk about. I can tell you that now. I know. What do you think? What do you, what do you think about Derrick Henry taking over now? About who taking over? Derrick Henry. They're old. I think that's a um, that's a pretty good uh, a pretty good spot because you know you got um guy from New England back any month, so you know you really can't go wrong in your running back spot. Um, yeah, Deion but, Lewis, right? Yeah, you got Deion Lewis back any month, but I don't. I'm not a big opponent of their offensive line. I mean, really, your offensive line is, is the key. You know, Marcus Mariota is maturing, but I, a lot of people think he should be farther than what he is now. Wow. Yeah. And you know, you also got David Johnson coming back. I know. I saw him in the preseason, man. What's he looking that like? Really is a monster. He's been looking like David Johnson. <laughs> you know, and, and you got Josh Rosen, so you got a brand new quarterback, and you got David Johnson, and it's interesting. The whole NFC is really, really interesting. And the thing is, this is probably the last year that um, Le'Veon Bell is going to be in Pittsburgh because they can't reach a, um, a contract you know, agreement with him. So he's probably going to end up on a team like the Jets or something like that because uh, he's looking at get a big contract, and Pittsburgh hasn't been able to do that for him. Yeah, this will be this is going to be a pivotal year, in my opinion, on whether or not that the NFL determines their their trajectory. Are they going to continue to flatten out and go down, or are they going to go up? Because they're going to have a lot of political stuff that they have to deal with, and the quality of the game with all the rule changes. Trucker Dave, always appreciate your input. You're always welcome on the Ozone. Be safe out there on the road. All right, fellas, thanks a lot. You know what else is popping right now that we were a part of last year, we were not there this year, is the U.S. Open has kicked off. Yeah. Uh, upset City already. Simona Halep got dropped in the very first match of the that? day. Yeah, world number one. I can because I think she's still dealing with a little bit of the championship fatigue and winning the French. But Now, do you believe that or do you think it's a focus thing? I don't think it's a focus thing. I think the surfaces are different and it makes a difference unless you're elite, elite, elite. 
and uh, and she's you know she's a world number one for a reason. But I think that opens up a lot for for a lot of different women out there to make moves. Me myself, I, after seeing what I saw, I like Serena Williams in this one. But the, who I'm rooting for as the underdog, surprisingly enough, is Venus Williams. I watched <laughs> Venus Williams play yesterday. She's got so much heart. I love Venus's game. Right, it's nice. People, they're, they're head, they're, 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 they're head on collision. Uh, yeah, yeah. In the third. And, but but people really play Venus cheap because Serena's so great, and uh, and you know especially from doing what she's doing at her age after the autoimmune disease. Uh, there, there's a there's you know it's early in the tournament, so we'll see what other upsets take place. But I'm taking Novak Djokovic to win this one, and and uh, actually for Nadal not to repeat this year. You've been high on that Joker for about the last two months. <laughs> <laughs> when the Joker is back, he's the best in the world, and he's been playing confidently like his body doesn't hurt, and that goes a long, long, long ways. I want to talk about some boxing. Why? Because there's been some great fights, and there's some great fights that are being made. And I'm actually very surprised because guys are acting like they want to fight each other. And it's time for some guys to get knocked Spark out, mate. Yeah, I, and honestly, this is like one of the first times in recent memory that you can hear guys talking about they want to fight and break out of the stables, like, you know? Yeah, and I wonder how that makes the promoters feel. Over the barrel. Yeah, you think? Yeah, because I mean, but you're now not you got to catch any jabs. So yeah, why are you, you don't have to take a body shot. Yeah, but they're losing their meal tickets in a sense if they're they put their guy out there and he doesn't win. You know what I'm saying? So we've watched them curate certain people or players or uh, boxers, and then they won't put them in situations where they're going to take a loss early or t- even have the opportunity to take a loss because they don't want to lose their meal ticket. And you can understand it. I can understand it from a business perspective, but I also think that the pendulum swings, and that's how it goes. And now the pendulum has swung so heavy to everyone protecting the zero of being undefeated that it's actually time for that pendulum to swing back the other direction. <laughs> and if people can focus on that pendulum, if if I was one of the promoters, I would focus on my fighters fight everybody, and they give you exciting fights, win, lose, or draw. Because, honestly, I don't really think the public cares anywhere near as much about a guy being undefeated as... Or getting knocked down. I don't even understand. You're in the fight game, and then people are worried about you getting knocked down or getting or losing. Well, this is like baseball. People, you know, uh, were forever embarrassed about striking out as players. And now that pendulum well, has be, swung. Though. But now that pendulum has swung the other direction, and guys are willing to strike out 200 times a year. And it brought and the hit, game down. It's brought the game down and hit 200 something. Man. All because they're worried about launch angle. Okay, but now you're talking about if you want to correlate that with boxing, if somebody loses, then they can get a rematch and come back and fight. You know, it's not like you're playing 162 games. It, well, speaking of which, that's exactly what your boy the Crusher is doing. Sergey Kovalev got knocked out uh, by by leader Alvarez, and that was actually a really, really interesting fight to watch because mm-hmm. he was. I thought he was winning the fight until he got knocked out, and that kid wasn't impressed. And... Uh, he, from what they're reporting, is that he's going to exercise his rematch. I thought he should retire because the way that it looked, I don't think he's got work for this kid now. Well, this is what goes on, though. The guys get older. You don't want to give it up. And just like we saw Klitschko fight against Joshua, you your heart wants to do it, but your body won't let you. You know, you don't have the reflexes right. and everything. And your power is starting to diminish a little bit. And now all of a sudden you're hitting a guy, and usually you get him out of there, and he's still standing there like, you ready now? Right. Right. Now the crusher's in a little trouble. Yeah, <laughs> he was in I'm a lot gonna of trouble. Crush your skull, <laughs> body blow, body blow, knock Upper him cut. out, knock him out. Yeah, and so with that, there's uh, mm, you you have that fight. We have a fight. Uh, a friend of the ozone is fighting on the eighth. And who's that? Showtime Sean Porter. Oh, that's my man. You know, I was rewatching some um, some of the Sean Porter footage. Uh huh. And Sean is so aggressive. He's such a, a warrior, but he has a tendency to smother his own punches and I, i'm very interested to see what danny does to combat that i think that's going to be actually a much better fight than than the buzz that it's getting right now right and this is a tough fight too because this is something that i actually can't put my finger on because of the styles they're, they're yeah they're so so different man, they're so different that you it danny matters how calm, they prepare danny it's is, all about how yeah. the preparation you and know. then it's going to matter who can adjust within the fight right because i don't really see anybody getting knocked out 
I mean, somebody might get knocked, knocked down. down. Yeah, yeah. But Danny Garcia has never to, been knocked down. Right? Say, it's hard to get Danny off his but feet. But if somebody's going to get him off his feet, it would be somebody like Sean Porter because he's a little bit smaller than he is. He'll be able to work inside and work that body, and maybe he can wear him down a little bit and get him off his feet. But he's got to get in there. Yeah, and then catch him with something, you know, because the, the best shots are the ones that you don't see. And maybe he can catch him and get him and get him off balance and knock him down, but it's a tough fight. I mean, this is a, a really, really tough one to pick. Tough on the call. Might have to sneak out there to Brooklyn to go take that one in. Mm. That's, that should be a good fight. Might have Kenny Porter on the on the pod next week, folks. Want to talk to Kenny about the, the training and see where we're going on that and see how it's moving. Uh, in other boxing news, we got that the, the golden boy prodigy who's ready to step up in talent uh, co- uh, competition level that we went and spoke to Oscar about, Ryan Garcia versus Carlos Morales. <laughs> and you know what? This should be a good test, and after this, this is going to be time for him to get into the deep water if he can get uh, get Carlos Morales out of there. I spoke with Carlos, and he actually said he's going to shake up the world. So I'm looking forward to that on the first. And now the big boys have made their fight. So Tyson Fury is going to fight Wilder. And in you know, in all honesty, I'd like for Deontay Wilder to bomb squad Tyson Fury. I'd like him to knock him out. I would like him to knock him out and get him out the game. But the th- I don't. I don't. But I, I have something inside of me telling me it's not going to happen. That's what. That's the way I'm feeling. And not only that, I feel like he's going to give him a problem. I think he's going to give him a problem with all of his awkwardness. Yeah. Although I have not been impressed with Tyson Fury at all in his in no, his comeback terrible. fights. He looks terrible. But he looks like he needs maybe in one more. But as we heard from fight. Deontay, he fights down, and that's yes. a problem. That's a problem, and he's not the type of guy that you fight down to. No, because he'll steal your belt, which is exactly what he did with Klitschko, and which is exactly what he's trying to do right now. Yeah, and it's a wise move. I have to say, he's got to be one of the most savvy promoters uh, going because he snuck right in there when when Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua didn't get the job done with Wilder. He stepped right in there, and now the good thing that we're going to see out of this situation is he's actually going to bring Wilder's profile up as far as his fans go, right? Because Wilder is always going to come to fight. And and Tyson Fury has a nation on his back as well, uh, being the gypsy. Now, with the King Kong Ortiz knockout that just took place, he's right back in the running in the heavyweight uh situation as well. Yeah. Even but- though he I I'm with you. I don't I don't I don't think he's actually a major threat, but he's also not somebody that people are in a rush to fight. That's what I was going to say. Who wants to actually fight him? He can put you out, but you know what? I don't feel like if he fought an Anthony Joshua type, I feel like Anthony Joshua would probably get him out of there early just because he has crazy power in both of his hands and he's fundamentally sound. Because I just being fundamentally sound in the, in the, the, the style of boxing and boxing in general is just way underrated. You know what I'm saying? Everybody goes with fluff or the yeah, cute flash. Yeah, and flash. But when you're fundamentally sound in the sweet science, man, it's a problem. You can actually put people out quick. Yeah. You swell them up. Kidney, liver, organ. Mm. If you haven't seen it, go watch a wonderful documentary on boxing called Facing Ali. That was our Ken Norton impersonation. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that you know that that's going down. Jose, uh, uh, last, you know, just over the weekend, uh, Ray Beltran was super billed to make some noise and in his fight against Pedraza, and it was totally and completely lopsided. It was a one-sided fight. Pedraza did his work, and now they're talking Pedraza <laughs> Lomachenko in December. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting because, like you were saying, the stables that are taking place uh, seem to be breaking down somewhat, but Bob Arum still has a tight rein on his, and that's what he's doing. Yeah, well, he's old school. He's not going to just let relinquish like that. Yep. We got a comeback fight coming up with Amir Khan. Very excited about that. Amir's a really nice guy. Hopefully, I hope he can get back in the game. At the proper weight class, I feel like Amir should just wrap his up. He's he's done an, enough. He's a, he's done enough. Yeah, and he's a respectable fighter. But you hang around in the sport of boxing, and and, you and then up, someone will retire and, you. And somebody will retire you, and we've seen it happen to a bunch of good guys. Man, I hate that. Yeah, and you just look at it, and it's like, wow, come on, man, just stop, stop it already, <laughs> knock, <laughs> it knock it off, off, oh, just knock it off. You gotta knock it off, or he'll knock it off for you. Well, the big one that we're waiting on, folks, HBO pay-per-view boxing, Triple G, the champion, Gennady Golovkin, is in the rematch against Canelo Cinnamon Alvarez. Uh, and the undercard shaped up really, really well. <laughs> David Lemieux and Spike O'Sullivan are going to be great. Uh, I like Spike O'Sullivan in that fight. Uh, that young kid, Jaime Munguia, is going to be in there against Brandon Cooks. I'm hoping that kid actually becomes something. Can't wait to get to Vegas. Happy to be back on the mic. And we will be more consistent because we love you. That's all I got in the Ozone. 
You got anything to add? No. I'm going to leave you with a quote from one of my favorites. And if you don't have it, go buy his book of just of his quotes. He was a fantastic coach, arguably the coach of the century. And Stone Cold winner, and he made a lot of boys into men over in Westwood at UCLA. The quote is from Mr. John Wooden. If you don't have time to do it right, when would you have time to do it over? Something to put on your mind, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Omar Miller. I'm here with my brother, Terry. Live from Koreatown, this is the Ozone. Ozone. I'm just living the dream. I'm in love with the lights. This is 